we're on the Henley start line with the Wifold Challenge Cup. It's Coxless Fours, a little bit more steering challenges here. And on the left of our picture, it's Marlow Rowing Club, local club. And on the right, from Cork in Ireland, uh, Cork Boat Club. Away they go. You can see Cork have got a really nice line and a good start in that first 10 strokes, really clean. Just saw that stroke man, Jonathan Cuddy, just making a slight gesture to his bowman, Michael Cronin, just making sure they were really nice and clean off that start. It seems to have worked quite well, and that's rewarded them with about a half to a third of a length lead off the island. Yeah, I've raced at this event, and it's really nerve-wracking getting from the... Uh, you might have seen the boys in the first part of the course onto these wooden booms, because if you get that wrong, your race can be over. But both crews got away really nicely cleanly there. Both of these crews, well, on the Marlow crew, steered from the bow seat. Uh, in the Marlow crew, that is Alexander Babbage sitting there. He will have the uh, rudder connected to his foot. And in the cork crew, it's steered from stroke, which is probably more normal in a straight course. You might think that's a bit weird, but the stroke, which is the left of our picture, can see behind and see the line much more easily than the other oarsmen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, did you ever steer boats when you were racing back in the day? or were you Yeah, you sort of feel the pressure to begin with, don't you? But then actually it starts to become natural. And the other thing is if, if the, the boat's not being steered that well and you're not steering it, you can get quite angry with it. So I sort of prefer to be in control. How about you? Yeah, and I think this, the steering in a Cox Les boat is just an extra responsibility. And Cork here look as though they're taking a really nice line. They're lining that bow side, which is the oar sticking to the left of them, out and just lining that up to the booms. Having yeah. that steering go. There, there, there we, we go. go. You can just about see it in the uh, stroke seat. There's a little bit of a cable going across. You see the black cable going underneath the silver rigger there. That's the cable that connects the strokes foot and it just pivots a little bit left and right and that's how he's steering uh, doing it very well actually Joel ever sorry that is um, Jonathan Cuddy from the cork crew uh, the striped vests of the cork crew uh, as they make their way through the middle of the course here yeah it, as well as a responsibility it also means that you can potentially have the power to put other crew members under pressure so we haven't seen it in this race so far which is any sort of steering issues near the booms although both crews are drifting towards the middle slightly um, but if I'm in the bows, which is... A, oh, Sarah Winkler's the umpire there is warning that crew, getting across off yeah. their line. Warning Marlow to just get back on their station. You're not allowed to interfere with the other crew's water in this race. Lovely shot there. There's Sarah, Sarah Winkler's keeping an eye on Cork, who are beautifully positioned, actually. They've steered really well down this course, haven't they? And look how smoothly the boat's running from this shot. You can see you don't want much up and down movement. You want it to be moving forward, uh, not up and down. And the reason why we're... In banging on so much about steering is because it rewards you with speed. We know that straight lines A to B is, is the best way to get down this course. And so if you're wiggling all over the place, it will make you slower. And that's why crews work so hard to steer very straight. Yeah, it's um, straight lines the quickest route, but also every time you steer, it's a little break. Um, so you add that into the mix as well, and you don't want to be doing it. It's difficult to do, but I think Cork is a really good demonstration of, of how to do that. And that's um, that little bit of less confidence steering for Marlow also costs you. You can see their oars are really close to the booms there. They need to get away from the back towards the middle. They, what they've done, Sarah Winkless, the umpire, has warned them, and they kind of overcompensated for that, which is an easy thing to do. Um, but now they seem to have corrected safely. Um, still, well, possibly on terms, probably about 500 metres to go, 400 metres now. Uh, it looks like Cork has got something close to clear water now, and now they're being warned by Sarah Winkler, so they have moved across too. Yeah, and, and the reason we talk so much about these booms, the, the sort of log wooden um, barriers on each side of the course, is because unlike when you have multi-lane race and you just hit a little boy, a little sort of plastic uh, sphere in the water and move on, if one of the oars in here clips the booms, your race is over. So Cork took an early lead, but Marlow, well, they haven't let them get away, almost overlapping the whole way down. Marlow having a final push in the last four or five strokes, but it's going to be our visitors from Cork Boat Club in Ireland um, who take the win in the first round of the Wifold Challenge Cup. They'll be really pleased with that. Quite a hard push from the other crew, and Cork beating Marlow to go through to tomorrow in the Wifold Cup. That's been running since 1855. Yeah, anything that Marlow could have done there, Cam, to, uh, to get back on terms better than they did? Yeah.